This is Dabu7. I want to share with you guys an amazing find here. An unidentified light source on Mars. Uh, Shoutouts to StreetCap1. I will leave links in the description box to all the stuff so you guys can check it out for yourself. This is from an official mars.jpl.nasa.gov image, raw image. And if you zoom in, you can see for yourself 100% that there is some kind of light source coming from right here on the ridge line. Someone's camping. Yep, someone's and there you guys go. Seek it for yourself. Like I said, I'll leave a link so you guys can inspect the image. But sure enough, there is some kind of light source being emitted right there in this image on Mars. It's been Dabu7. Eyes open. Live, this is one for the record. I'm Diana, and today is April 6th and April 7th, 2014. And here are your news updates for today. Now, on the 7th, BP Earth Watch is saying that there's some kind of flood going on in Mississippi. Uh, major flooding, Interstate 49 submerged. So, here we go. Let's listen. We're just going to listen. Let's turn it up so you can hear this. There you go. April 7th, 2014. Guys, this is the day I'm here where I'm at. I'm uh, shooting this live this morning. The rivers are rising. This is not, not a river. This is a field. You saw the fence there. This is all fresh spring runoff of water. All right. That's so that he's cutting feet. out. He's having a big problem. But, uh, He's having a big problem down there. He's in, in, and it's coming in all all staggery. All right, but he's having a ma there's a major flood in Mississippi. Interstate 49 is submerged. So if you know anyone traveling on Interstate 49 or headed that way, tell them to go back because there's flooding, and they have another 24 hours where the water's going to rise. And the fields are flooded. It's not even coming from a river. So heads up on that. Big warning. Extreme weather flooding. Now. Also. What else we got here going on? There's a couple other things. We got four incoming solar CMEs. They should be arriving now. We have Arctic vortex. Dip again. Flooding tornadoes. Ross Burnett Spillway. All right, heads up. I guess that's where it's at. Also, what else we got going on here? Uh, I believe the Ukraine. Let's see if it's on here. Let me go back. The Ukraine has just decided to join uh, Russia, I believe. Let me look here. Crimea votes to join Russia, U.S. Treasury sell-off. So heads up on that. Alrighty then, you got Crimea votes to join Russia. Wow. And that's coming off of BP Earthwatch's uh, channel. And also we have the four blood moons. The first one is going to start on Passover, which is on the 15th of April so heads up on that one keep your eyes to the sky on that now I'm gonna attach more videos that's what I'm gonna do I have some lined up for you so I'll see you tomorrow on the flip side we it's Monday now we have four days to go before the weekend hang in there stay in there and be prepared for anything 
They were cam trailing all over the place in Central Florida. I saw a whole bunch of big X's. So I guess Harp is getting ready to do something. All right, take care. Be safe. Be prepared for anything. All righty then. One day, some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. Protecting the sea from radiation is one of the highest priorities in the management of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. This video focuses on one of several methods being employed by TEPCO and our partners to prevent contaminated water from reaching the sea, groundwater bypass. Simply put, groundwater bypass is a strategy to intercept groundwater before it can come into contact with radioactivity inside the Fukushima Daiichi facility. Water that is successfully intercepted and remains uncontaminated can be safely sent back on its way to the sea, protected from contact with any contamination. Intercepting and rerouting uncontaminated groundwater is important for two reasons. One, it prevents that water from being contaminated with radiation. And two, it reduces the burden on the Fukushima Daiichi facility to treat and store contaminated water. Storage takes up increasing amounts of space and can be vulnerable to leaks. Groundwater poses a challenge at Fukushima Daiichi for several reasons. First, as you can see in this photograph, the Fukushima Daiichi facility is located at the base of a hillside next to the ocean. Groundwater, like all water, runs downhill. As a result, rain that falls both outside the facility and inside the facility seeps into the ground and then runs downhill toward the sea. Ordinarily, this would pose no problem. But since the accident at Fukushima Daiichi after the March 2011 tsunami, groundwater that enters the facility may become contaminated either by coming into direct contact with the damaged nuclear fuel or by coming into contact with other contamination on the site. Today, some 400 tonnes of groundwater flows into the site buildings every day and becomes contaminated. As this contaminated water accumulates and must be stored on the site, the challenge of cleaning and managing the water grows significantly. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it plans to add more storage tanks for contaminated water by the end of next March. It's a year earlier than the originally scheduled date. TEPCO will increase the capacity of the tanks to up to 800,000 tonnes by March 31st. Currently, tanks at the plant can store about 480,000 tons of radioactive water, but 90% of them are already full. It has been building additional tanks on the southern side of the compound to handle the buildup of contaminated water. The utility says it has accelerated the construction plan and it's now possible to transport prefabricated tanks from manufacturers by ship. TEPCO officials also say they have come up with more efficient ways to build tanks inside the compound. Obviously then, preventing at least some of that water from entering the site is important to reduce the contaminated water. Workers at Fukushima Daiichi will soon start tackling a growing problem in a new way. They'll try to reduce a buildup of contaminated water by releasing groundwater into the ocean. Officials with the government and TAPCO got the consent of fishery cooperatives. Plant workers will pump up groundwater before it gets contaminated with radioactive substances, then discharge it into the ocean. They'll start as soon as next month. Their task will slow a buildup of contaminated water that's stored on the site and hampering the decommissioning process. Officials are promising to ensure radiation levels in groundwater released meets safety standards. They say a third party will be involved in discharging the water and making sure it's safe. Fishery workers gave their consent but still have concerns. We had no choice but to accept this plan. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me show you something. What? This. Oh! Oh! 
Look, I don't want to hurt you. You don't? No. Ugh. It's just that it's important to me that you understand. It's essential for the government and Tokyo Electric Power Company to obey all the rules. We are grateful to the Fisheries Federation. We'll do everything we've promised and try to gain the understanding of fishery workers. Officials say they need about a month to brief local authorities and analyze groundwater before workers start releasing it. This is the goal of groundwater bypass. Following consultation with the government, several measures against contaminated water are applied or prepared. We are building an impervious wall on the sea side of the buildings to suppress the groundwater outflow to the sea. And we will make a wall of the frozen soil around a building to prevent the groundwater inflow to the buildings. Groundwater bypass is one of the countermeasures to keep water away from the sources of contamination. How does groundwater bypass work? As you see in this animation, we will pump up the groundwater on the uphill side of the facility, but we will not divert the water directly to the sea. Instead, to ensure that the water is uncontaminated, we will temporarily store and test it. We will store the water in tanks separate from the ones being used to hold contaminated water. Why might this water be contaminated at all? Rainwater that seeps into the ground may carry some surface radiation with it. In most instances this is quite low, but TEPCO is committed to ensuring that this bypass water is discharged only when it is clean enough to return to the sea. Its standards are stricter than WHO guidelines on the drinking water. The results of those tests will be promptly posted on the TEPCO website. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. Japanese people have always felt a strong connection with the sea, and the country has many aquariums. One of them offers people a unique view of the maritime world. It has just launched an interactive digital aquarium. NHK World's Akane Nakajima joins us live. Akane, what can you tell us? Hi, Catherine. I am at an aquarium located in Kamogawa, Chiba Prefecture. It is just a two-hour drive away from central Tokyo. Now, it's home to more than 800 species. Now, this aquarium says more people are actually visiting during this month. And compared to last March, visitors are actually up 15%. You can see many people are here, actually, and we'll tell you why. Now, usually when you think of an aquarium, you think of a big tank filled with many different types of fish. But take a look at this. This 3D computer graphics reproduce a coral reef. The project manager of this aquarium says it's Japan's first interactive digital aquarium. It was launched in March. Wow, it looks almost real there, Akane. You mentioned the aquarium was interactive. In what way? There's more to it than just watching this animation. Visitors can actually use this interactive panel to play a part in deciding what happens on the screen. Now let me show you. This is an interactive panel. Konnichiwa, hello. Now, usually what you do is you choose a fish. In this case, I chose an Indian mackerel. Now, you would color it in like this. And, let's see, draw an eye. And maybe a few little bit of little characteristics here and there. Once you're done, you press OK. And see how my fish disappears from the panel and it's going to appear. Here we go. Here's my personalized fish swimming. It's going to be swimming along the virtual coil, coral. Oh, it's swimming by itself, actually. Now, when these Indian mackerels um, sense danger, they migrate in groups to protect itself from predators. The virtual aquarium reproduces the behavior of each species. Another example is the relationship between clownfish and sea anemones. They form a type of partnership to protect each other. Now this interactive aspect allows anyone from kids to adults to learn about how the coral reef ecosystem works while also having fun. 
Now I'm going to ask a parent on their take of the digital aquarium. すいません。こんにちは。こんにちは。実際に体験してみていかがでしょうか。そうですね。あの、子供が選んだ魚がどういった動きをするのかっていうのが画面で見れるので、あの、わかりやすいなって思います。すごい子供は楽しんでやってる